bring my deck, check we're seeing the right thing. Oh, I can't see you guys now. Hang on two secs. Oh. I want us to be able to see the chat. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to see both. So let's see. I don't think I can see the chat as well. I can, can help you... facilitate that. Brilliant. All right. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, perfect. All right, great. I can't see any of you now, but I can see my slides. So that's probably a positive thing. So um, lovely to be here. Thank you very much, Christy, for having me um, and being part of the user group. Uh, I would have loved to be there in person because San Diego is my favourite city in the US. <laughs> so um, one day I'll hopefully get over there and be able to come and meet some of you. Um, but yeah, no, it's fantastic to be able to deliver these topics and educate people. And that's what I love doing is inspiring and supporting women. It's why I set up Supermums. I'll tell you a bit about Supermums for those of you that don't know, um, to really raise awareness about a Salesforce career and opportunity. And um, we help not just those people coming into the sector, but those that want to progress and develop through our series of courses and coaching. And it's really where this ambitious women mindset came up that through, I suppose, the journey of working with women and equally for myself as well, um, you know, we can talk about having a flexible, well-paid career, which the Salesforce community can provide for you. And then this is for men and everybody else. I know we've not got women here, um, but, you know, we can talk about having this flexible, well-paid career. But what was a reality check for us again for me and actually seeing this for other trainees is that we have to have the mindset to manage that because we can work flexibly and have no boundaries. We can work flexibly and not really feel like we're achieving anything. Um, you know, we can compromise all of that and get burnt out still. And I went through that and got very burnt out um, in my flexible Salesforce career that I was telling everybody it was so wonderful. And I had leadership coaching. I'm a big advocate coach for coaching. Um, I trained as an NLP coach back in 2006. Um, which was uh, a three week training program um, and it was very in depth. And I actually ran a coaching company, um, which I grew and we had 20 coaches, career coaches working with young people at the time who were 18 to 30. So I'm a big advocate, advocate for coaching. And then with, when I launched Super Mums to help women get back into the workplace, um, we started with Salesforce training, but quickly realized that coaching and that mindset piece was equally important because just because you teach somebody how to do Salesforce as a technical skill set, it's all about still that confidence and those goals and the coaching and the mindset to get that career that you love and to sort of be able to self-manage yourself really in a way that, as I say, these six principles that I'm going to be talking about today is around, you know, being able to be clear on your goals, being able to be aware of your energy levels. Um, number three is sort of making sure that you've got the right boundaries in place and you're managing those boundaries. Um, the fourth element is around confidence and sort of be knowing how to give yourself confidence and not being that inner critic. Uh, the fifth element is around relationships, making sure you've got the right relationships around you to really thrive. And then the sixth element is about impact, like knowing what impact you want to have and being aware of when you've made that impact. And these are the six elements that really stood out for me when I went through that journey from burnout to, you know, healing myself and sort of coming back out through my coach, the coaching that I was receiving. And I, I say I've recognized this for other women that have been through our program and actually started in a job, but not held these things um, in their mind and have subsequently got a bit burnt out as well. And they've moved different job roles. And this is about coaching yourself, because if you learn coaching tools and techniques, they are things that stay with you for life. And having invested at the, the, the NLP coaching course that I did was over £3,000. I was 26 at the time. As I say, it was a three-week course. I actually did another coaching program on top of that. But the awareness that I gained from learning those coaching tools and techniques at that age has stood me in an amazing stead for one being able to use those coaching tools and techniques in my life at all different points to be very resilient to things and know how to bounce back and to know how to kind of you know sort of keep going there are times however 
um, when you, you know, you can't, you need an external coach to work with you as well, because your brain is like too wired to kind of really get that focus and get that accountability as well. It's about creating that accountability and motivation. So I equally invest in mentors and coaches. And I've got two wonderful coaches and mentors now. Um, I invest three grand a month on my coaching and mentoring right now. Um, so I invest a lot in this, but they teach me things, they keep me accountable, they coach me, they keep me energized. Um, and you know, I see that in the return on investment from the business growth and for what we do and what we elements. So you've got to look at that ROI. But as I say, I'm a big advocate for one, I can sort of embed some of these things in me, but two, equally having mentors and coaches around you can support you. So I'm going to talk through this session today. I want to make it as practical as possible. So I'd love to see that you're putting things in the chat um, and thinking through things like I'm going to talk through these six different areas. I'm going to ask you questions and give you a few moments to reflect on those and say put them in the chat because um, you know, this is a live coaching session um, for you to start to feel and get a sense of what I'm meaning by these things and that you've got something from this session today. Um, so, yeah, so please do participate and be share what you feel to share, obviously, because you might not want to share everything. Um, but this, yeah, I want it to be very practical. Um, so just to do an introduction to super mums uh, i suppose as context to this um so i'm heather black the founder of super mums um i've been an nlp certified coach since 2006 i should say not 16 actually the six um when i launched a business it was a coaching business and then sub subsequently ran that for eight years before starting a salesforce consultancy which i ran for eight years and then um, Super Mums has been running for six years, um, which we spun out of the consultancy as a separate entity. So I've learned a lot through running a, a Salesforce consultancy. I started as a freelancer, um, then decided to grow a team around me. Um, I did a, a talk with Salesforce Ben. If any of you want to know about my journey running a consultancy, I shared some great tips on the Salesforce Ben webinar Monday, Tuesday night. Um, it's been a busy week for um, webinars. And um, yeah, very interesting journey. It's very hard running a consultancy, um, but I, you know, I oversaw over 700 projects. Um, obviously, had quite a few that I did myself directly um, at different points on that journey with 350 clients. So I've been on this whole journey, the Salesforce journey. Now I focus my time on training um, others in consultancy skills. So I run the consultancy skills course around business analysis, agile project management, and change management, with a lot of practical tools and templates. And then also focus our time on delivering group coaching programs. Um, we've got career coaches in house at Supermums as well. So we coach people alongside the Salesforce admin. So I get to meet um, and I love doing the hands on work with some of our trainees that go through our program and support them um, because it keeps my hands on. And so we teach them the mindset things as well as the training um, elements of it. And during those years um, of running Supermums and Consultancy, I was awarded a golden hoodie um, for our work with Supermums, which is fantastic. And, um, you know, very, it was great to sort of obviously get that recognition in the ecosystem of what we do collectively as a team. I like to think the golden hoodie represents my whole team, not just me, because they bring everything to life. And um, also we won the EMEA Partner of the Year Award presented by Salesforce.org for the work we did with our consultancy. So um, before it closed, I felt like we reached a whole, you know, level of, you know, we, if we achieved that, great, but we didn't, we didn't make it through the pandemic, unfortunately, due to our whole way of, wave of things that affected projects and staff and everything else. Um, it, it got to a point of uh, just burned <laughs> at the last stage because it was just a bit of a roller coaster ride for me personally, as well as um professionally like there was so much going on so um so yes yeah, so i've been on quite a journey learned a lot in the ecosystem um at supermums we are an authorized salesforce training provider so we deliver the official admin adx 201 course and the marketing power courses and we also deliver consultancy skills 
um, to help people get to that next level. So quite a few of our trainees come on and sort of progress to be solution architects or consultants, et cetera, and go through that. Uh, we deliver the one-to-one -one and group coaching. So the Ambitious Women Mindset is part of a mastermind, which I'll just sort of cover at the end, um, which is a group coaching programme if people, if you want to experience more of this. Um, but also people very much get involved in super mums in a volunteering capacity so they can become mentors, trainers and ambassadors for us. Um, so we have ambassadors from across the world. We deliver training across the world. Um, we have a USA team and a UK and a MIA team, technically. Um, and we also have people that use Supermums. We have a recruitment arm. Um, so people hire talent from us and sponsor us. So we've trained. We've got over 800, over 800 trainees now globally and um, volunteers from every corner of the world, I think. Uh, and it's a fantastic community and such a buzz with everybody involved. So it's great to have some super mum people here tonight. Thank you for joining, um, who's part of our community. So that's the background, that's where I'm coming from, um, I suppose, just to sort of give it context. And the why very much is, um, you know, is about let's not get burnt out. There's a lot of conversation about burnout in the Salesforce industry right now. I think we've all felt the burnout from the pandemic as well, and sort of having to weather so many storms around all of those things. And so, you know, it's great that so many of you have come tonight because I think quite a few this, we need to sort of prevent burnout by being more mindful about all of these things, which is why I'd like you to sort of be very practical about this session tonight. So, so let's get cracking. We'll hopefully spend maybe five minutes on each of these topics. So, um, I'll have my phone here just to kind of keep me on check a little bit. I so just wanted first... to throw out, yeah. sorry, we're still just seeing your first slide. It looks oh. like you have other slides too, but they're not changing. Okay, so that's, I didn't get the, uh, <laughs> that didn't work then, did it? Why is that not working? Let's see. Uh, lost you, where are you? Um, ah, so you can, can you see that now? You can see goal setting now, but it's on the low. We see the goal setting, yeah. Yeah, interesting. I wonder why when I move it to full screen, it doesn't go to full screen on yours. Yeah, we're seeing just like the normal PowerPoint screen with the slides mm -hmm. on the left too. Okay. I don't know, because when I press full screen, it's not showing up for you. So I'm not quite sure what the differences should I, should I keep it on this is that okay to keep with yeah, those slides I think this yeah. is okay yeah well, yeah I'm not quite sure how to do it otherwise um it's not working for me unless I entire screen maybe let's try that and then I can try that how's that that's the full slide yeah Okay, all right, well, let's continue with that. Thank you for flagging that. Brilliant. Okay, right, let's get our hands dirty a little bit. So, first, I'd like to talk about goal setting. Um, now, to put, I suppose to put this in context, um, goals are really important because without a destination and a map, you can find yourself really lost and meandering quite a lot and not really knowing what you're going and not feeling any sense of accomplishment on a daily or weekly basis. So it's really clear with goal setting that you get clear on where you want to go. And you know that you've got that sense of accomplishment at the end of the week, which can build your confidence, make you feel enthused, make you feel empowered and motivated if you know exactly what you're cracking, trying to crack down on. So there are a number of coaching exercises that we tend to do with clients around coaching, um, you know, goal setting, sorry, um, and sort of looking at this tangibly, because, you know, I can say to you now, what are some of your goals, but you might not really know. But the first question I'll ask of you, and I, it'd be good, great for you to put in the chat or not, is are you at the, are you currently finding yourself lost, left behind, not performing, struggling with motivation or lacking confidence in your achievements. Does that resonate with anybody right now? Um, because then goal setting might help you. So just put in the chat if this is something that you think you need to pay a little bit of attention to. And let's see if this is coming up for anybody. Everyone says yes. 
Blimey. Okay, all right. Well, you're obviously in the right place tonight. <laughs> See why you've joined. Um, so, you know, do you need to get clearer on your destination and tangible goals to know what route to take? You know, that's the second question, really. And if you know the, those two, those two go hand in hand. So inevitably, um, that would be where you at. So, if this is an area, what I'd recommend you do is to set yourself daily, weekly, or monthly goals. One of the coaching tools you can use around this is the SMART framework, which many of you will be aware of. Um, but there's also like, the GROW model as well and various other ones. Um, so with SMART, you'd be looking at specific, measurable, achievable, timeframes, realistic goals. I want you to just spend a couple of minutes writing down what a goal or two goals or three goals could be for the next week that you could really focus in on now that would make you feel like you've accomplished something. And this could be at work, it could be in your life. And I'd like you to write that down on a piece of paper in front of you, and then you can put it on your wall and you can really just focus on that for the next week. So just take it like a couple of minutes to reflect on what some goals might be. Obviously we've got a short time now, you might need to think about it a bit more, but just, just sort of do a little brain dump because I tell you what, writing them down is really powerful in the first place because it makes them become real. So just take a couple of minutes to think about what the, some of those goals could be. And if you don't know, then then take some time after this session to think through it a little bit more. Heather, where do you typically keep your goals? I find if I write things down in a notebook, then I turn to the next page and I never go backwards again. So how, how do they stay visible to you? <laughs> My feet are can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> you can still see me. Um, yeah, so I wrote mine down. So we, we as a team um, do this as a team at work, um, but equally I have to do it with my coaches and mentors as well. And um, we write them, we have actually a super mum's journal that we give people and we have goal setting as part of the journal, um, which has a wheel in it. So we do a wheel of life and that helps us think about our goals. So as a team, we reflect on the wheel of life, which looks at sort of eight different areas like life, money, relationships, health, work, kind of creates that context. So wheel of life is another great goal setting tool. Um, but so you can have a journal, you can have a piece of paper that you put up on the wall, as I say, to have it in mind um you've got to find the thing that works for you because everybody's different so some people might you know have electronic trello or whatever um but i'm a bit like you if it's not front of mind or in a sort of where i can see it visibly it disappears off my train of thought perfect thanks for that but maybe that's a good thing to put in the chat like where would you put your goals let's ask everybody right now where would you write your goals that make you know make them visible to you it's a really good point and then maybe you can just see what people's ideas are <laughs> on the fridge <laughs> different options i put post-it notes all over my computer monitor for things that i need to remember yeah and you know what it goes back to my next point here is weekly reflection is really important to get a sense of accomplishment now holding yourself accountable to this each week on your own might work for you or might not work for you i think the reality is doing it as a team which is what we do at super mums is has been really powerful because we're like okay what are your goals and intentions the the week ahead and then everybody has to present back on that at the week after 
that makes us all show up and go, oh, yeah, we've done this, we've done this, we've done that. And we've got that accountability. And similarly, with the, my mentors and coaches that I work with, they make me set those um, you know, quarterly intentions and then I have to present back to them. And they'll probably give me a kick up the bum if I haven't done them. <laughs> and there's nothing worse than like having like that accountability partner. Um, so that might be, you know, it might be a manager. It might be about having that separate one to one coach um, or mentor is I say so I've always invested in that because I know, you know, I'm as, as a business owner. I'm not technically accountable to anybody. Right. But obviously I've got to make the business work and we've got goals and everything else. But if I don't have a coach or a mentor kind of keeping me really on track, I'm in that kind of feeling a bit lost, struggling with, you know, what am I doing next and where am I going? And it's great to have this big target, but you've got to really we call it chunking down. That is another coaching technique, um, you know, chunking down to go, OK, we've got this big goal. But in order to achieve that big goal, what are all the little small things that you need to do? So when we coach our super mums, we talk about, you know, getting a job as the big goal. But, but underneath all of those things is you need to do your CV, you need to do a demo, you need to prep, you know, do your LinkedIn profile. You know, we need to kind of prep for the interviews. There's like lots of things to tick off on that journey. You've got to approach and speak to three recruiters or you've got to put your thing on a jobs board. You know, there's lots of components and goals that you'll need to do in order to get that big outcome. So our, our recruitment team and our career coaches will work with our super trainees on all of those little goals to get them to the big goal of where they want to be. So what I'd like you to take away from this session is, you know, think about setting yourself daily, weekly, monthly goals. As Christy said, you know, write them down, make them visible, transparent in where, you know, where you can stick to and reflect on them daily, weekly and start to feel that sense of accomplishment and celebrate them, even if it's putting it on social media. You know, if that's what you need to do to kind of share with people like brilliant this week, I've achieved X, Y, Z, you know, because that gives you the kick that you need or um, it's sharing it with your team. You know, we all have the emojis like, well done, well done, hearts. And you're like, oh, you know, and you feel good because you come away from that. Um, so celebrate, please do celebrate the goals that you're achieving because that gives you the, the boost and maybe treat yourself to something, you know, if you've achieved that big milestone, treat yourself to a new jumper or a coffee or whatever it is um, to celebrate. So that's goals. <laughs> so quite a lot to say to cover, but, you know, various coaching techniques I've talked about there is the smart model, there's the grow model, there's the wheel of life, there's chunking down, you know, all these coaching tools underpin goal setting. So I've covered it in principle. There's obviously some techniques there that you can do. Um, but yeah, that would be good. Any questions about goal setting before we move on? We have one from Louise. Um, she says, do you think you can be successful with two new goals for the first week if time commitment isn't an issue? So I guess how many goals is reasonable to set for yourself? Well, if we look at the SMART framework, it's got to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time framed for yourself. So obviously, I, I don't know what those goals are and I don't know what your time commitments are. So I think you've got to look at them honestly from your perspective or, you know, get input from somebody that can see those goals and go, is this realistic for myself? Um, because you've got to own them and you've got your calendar in front of you. And this will lead me on to the other topic around boundaries, but you need to put and block out time in your diary to achieve these goals. So these things are obviously going to overlap as we go through the session. So, yeah, have a think about that. So we'll come on to boundaries because that might help with those those things about what's realistic or not. So I'm going to move on to energy. Um, number two is energy. So you won't bounce back if you don't have a spring in your step. I need you to plug into positivity. That's what I want you to be thinking about. So what I want you to sort of assess in, in a moment is how is your energy level on a scale of one to 10? Naught being nothing, 10 being fully energized. Ideally, you want to retain a positive energy level on a normal everyday basis of between seven and 10. So when things do hit the fan, you can bounce back relatively easily. 
Um, because the reality is if your energy levels are constantly in those three to fives to fours, when something does go wrong, you're going to then potentially hit that depression stage and suffer from mental health. So I want you to reflect on where you feel your energy level is now. If you want to share, put that in the chat. And then I also want you to say, what is it that gives you energy? Now, energy is it, it's very important to be aware of what gives you energy, particularly an introvert versus extrovert. Now, when I first had children and, and reflected on this actually over a period of time, I learned more about actually the, the chemical differences in our head around introvert versus extrovert. Um, because if I'm with the kids all day, I'm like, I, I can't get overwhelmed, to be honest, you know, because they're constantly chatting or needing that attention. And so now I'll just say, look, girls, can you go and like play and watch TV? Because I'm just going to have a bit of downtime for half an hour. Um, and I need that. And I'm aware of that. And that now when I have um, the way that I structure my diary is I'll have half day chunks of being in no meetings and I'll just be writing content. Um, and then I'll have meetings the afternoon because I can't cope with a full day meeting. My energy level is so flat if I've been in meetings all day by the end of the day. And then I don't feel I'm bringing my full self to a meeting. Right. So. An introvert is wired differently in your head and you will need to get any, your energy from different sources, probably by spending some downtime with yourself, doing exercise by yourself, reading, being creative, sleeping even whatever we charge you. Whereas if you're an extrovert, you'll get more energy from talking to people, from being out and about, you know, from doing group team events and sports activities. Um, so just have a think now for again for a couple of minutes, where is my energy level now? And what are the things that give me energy? And you might not be doing some of those things that give you energy. Um, this might be something that you need to build in, but just have a think about that for a moment. We have a range in the chat right now from five to nine. <laughs> Good. Well, like the nines, brilliant. <laughs> and some folks um, getting energy from from alone time and exercising, like you said. And then Tiffany said by plugging into positivity, which is so cute. <laughs> Good. Oh, thank you. I like things like that. Plug into positivity. Yeah, plug yourself in. Um, so it's, it's so important to be aware of this and maybe just monitor yourself. Um, you know, if this is an area that you think you need attention over the next couple of weeks, just assess like, what's my energy like today? You know, notice when it goes up and up and down. Um, I mean, something else, like, so I was struggling with chronic health issues um, and this is probably part of, part of the burnout and also, you know, negative relations to my life and everything else that was sort of hampering this. But I just literally had no energy in the evenings. I'd be that zonked out by seven in front of the TV. And I had, you know, I was paying a personal trainer to make me go and exercise. And when I did this energy sort of levels exercise as part of the coaching program that I was on, it rewired my brain completely because it made me realize I wasn't doing stuff that actually energized me um, and motivated me. And now I can motivate myself very easily to go and do exercise four times a week. And that gives me energy. And actually what I notice is when I go for a swim or I'm walking, I have all the creative ideas for my business in that time because I'm not sat at my computer. So it's still work. I'm just in a different environment <laughs> class that, you know, it's like I'm going to go swimming for an hour because I'll work through my ideas in my head. I don't need to be at a computer to work. What I'm doing is energizing myself in another way. And then I come back, I'm like, right, you know, we're doing this and we're doing that. And I get the best ideas actually around water. So don't, you know, for me, it was always like, oh, I don't have time to exercise. Whereas now I've reframed that completely to say, well, actually, I get my best business ideas and brainstorming when I'm out exercising. So I really need to do more of that. So off the back of this, think about what gives you energy and then allocate and spend time recharging that energy regularly and put that in your diary and routine. And if I don't exercise now in a week, I really notice my energy levels plummet. Um, and so then I'm not as productive, right? You know, I'm actually sat there and doing less work. Whereas if I go on my Peloton for half an hour, 
you know, that supercharges me. Like the instructors were amazing. They're really uplifting. The music's great. And I'm like, right, you know, what am I going to do next? And I'm off, you know, and I'm ready for the next thing that comes on. That energizes me so much more than watching TV for an hour. Um, so it's just like play around with that. Um, are there any questions around energy? Yeah. Louise wants to know, is it possible to get energy by positive reinforcement? And then another one, can structure give you energy? Mm, right. Great questions. So there's a great quiz called um, for the five love languages. I don't know if any of you have heard of that. It's a free quiz online. Love gives you energy. Right. If you feel love, that is a real energy booster. And you can do the quiz and it I, I helps you identify which of the love languages are really attuned to you. Now, you've got affection. You've got positive affirmation, which is like the positive reinforcement stuff. You've got acts of service. Um, you've got, uh, I remember them off the top of my head now, you've got quality time, which could be with your kids, your loved one or whatever it is, or with your colleagues at work. Uh, and then there's a fifth one. Um, and if you do the quiz, it makes you align to go, they're the things that give me energy in a relationship. You know, as I say, the love languages can be used about your relationship with your kids. There's a kids quiz as well, which is really interesting. So I got my kids to do the kids one. Um, and, you know, it equally can transpose into work and how you treat colleagues, etc. Because maybe the colleague that you're working with, you're sort of buying them something to say, well done. But that doesn't work for them. Maybe positive affirmation is the thing that makes them feel happy and energized. So absolutely positive affirmations, acts of service you know, emotional hugs, all of that can give people energy because love is energy. Um, so I'd really recommend that free quiz as well off the back of that to help, you know, round some of those things. I'm excited to make my kids take that. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting though, because my daughter, she keeps she keeps coming up with the, um, the presents one and I'm like, really? <laughs> Because <laughs> she's very emotional, like she's very kinesthetic as well. And I'm like, she's really getting swayed by these questions. But yeah, she's, you know, it's interesting what they come up with. <laughs> and there's an anger one as well. She likes doing the anger one. <laughs> like, so there's a free quiz around anger and um, another one as well, love languages and something else. And there's a, a, a specific one for workplace, which all our team did as well, which is really interesting. So managers knew how to better support, you know, better sort of celebrate achievements by their uh by their team Fab. any more questions around that um no other questions tracy just commented that my love language is presents exclusively sold by the salesforce store and she's probably <laughs> not wrong <laughs> i don't know if people would say that <laughs> right. love it right let's keep moving because we're, we're 22 already all right boundaries so number three is boundaries, blink and you've missed it, create new habits today to manage your time. So we can all put things in the diary and start it tomorrow. The reality is that habits only form over a series of, a series of time by being repetitive with ourselves. So we've really got to get stricter and put things in the diary and manage these habits. I suppose my question about whether, you know, is this relevant to you right now is, um, do you feel overwhelmed and struggle with time management? Do you struggle to say no to things? Do you know what your boundaries are? So yes or no in the chat <laughs> right now. Is this an area for you? That's the first question. What have we got? Yes or all no's? Um, struggling with saying no to things. Second guessing things. Mark says, can I just say it depends on who's asking? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> a bit of a mix there. So if this is an area for you, what I want you to do is get really clear on what your boundaries are. Um, and that obviously bearing in mind around making time for your self-care. So anything that gives you energy, you need to make sure is in your diary, making sure that your work commitments are in there and you ring fence them. So an example about the flexible working is, it bothers me when women say, oh, I'm paid for 20 hours a week. But of course I do 30 because there's always more to do. I'm like, no, you shouldn't be doing 30 if you're only paid for 20. You're not managing your time. You're either not pushing back on the managers um, or you're not performing. And the, 
when I ran my last business, I didn't have kids and I worked all hours. And um, this was the business that I um, handed over to somebody else back in 2012. And I said to myself, when I start the next business, if I'm working more than 40 hours a week and I'm not hitting my targets, I am doing something wrong. And if I'm doing something wrong, I need to invest in mentors and trainers who are going to teach me to do things better. I'm going to delegate and make sure I've got other people around me doing things and I'm focusing on my time. Or I'm going to, you know, sort of really evaluate what I'm doing, because the reality is if you're committed to do 20 hours or 30 hours or 40 hours, that's what you should be doing for your job. And you need to really understand and appraise, like, why am I working overtime? What is wrong here? There's something wrong somewhere with it. So, you know, I get my soapbox about this stuff because I'm like, seriously, if that's what you're committed to 20 hours. That's all you do. And you've got to work out how you perform in those 20 hours to deliver the outcomes you need and figure out what is wrong in that matrix if it's above that. So you need to sort of plan out your week. What is it you want to be doing when? have a calendar and you want to stick to it because that's the only way that you're going to create new habits and not you know to be able to say no to things and cancel things that aren't a priority really think about where you're spending your time getting rid of negative things out of your life um, and make times of things that energize you so that's what i really want you to get clear on for your boundaries um right we'll move through to number four because i'm conscious of time going through Number four is around confidence. Um, so if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. I mean, that's the reality, right? Nobody, you have to sell yourself in every capacity and you've got to find your superpower and you've got to really think about what that is. I think things to be aware of is how bad is your inner critic? Um, you know, we will speak to ourselves in a really negative way all the time. You wouldn't dream of speaking that way to a friend, um, you know, in in the same way. And you've got to speak to yourself as if you're speaking to a friend. You've really got to think about, you know, being able to talk properly, um, you know, talk nicely to yourself and to lift yourself up and not feel like you're in your ego for that. Like there's nothing wrong with saying to yourself, great job, you're brilliant at this and brilliant at that. Don't be shy about, being proud of things that you're great at and equally recognize the things that you're not great at and let them go and say that's not me you know and equally I'll say you know I don't you know I'm not a team manager that's not what I do right I have team managers I'm the entrepreneur and the leader I know I'm good at that stuff and the strategy you know I'm the entrepreneur um you know, and that's not a bad thing. Like you've got to be really clear on what it is that you're good at and stick with your zone and surround yourself with the other people. And I'll talk about building those relation, you know, delegating and relationships and build around that. So don't beat yourself up about being rubbish at something. Either stand back and let it go and delegate. So you've got that perfect matrix or train yourself up. Like if you're not very good at something, go, well, do I let this go? Or actually, I really want to be better at that. And I'm going to do some training and coaching and get better at it. And that's what a growth mindset is. So do you live in a growth or a fixed mindset? A growth is where you're like, I want to grow and develop. And I know I'm not going to be great at stuff. But I'm going to go and find out. Whereas a fixed mindset is always defeatist. They're like, I'm never going to be good enough. I'm not going to be able to do this. You know, I can't do this. It's a lot of can'ts. Whereas a growth is I can. I can do that. So be aware of that i think the other circumstances that i've found myself in which i moved out of is where you've got people around you who are negative to you and you know you're not going to be brilliant at everything but if somebody is putting you down for not being great at everything is constantly criticizing you is you've got to let them go because they aren't good for you and your things and yes you know yes you're not going to be great at stuff but if somebody the person around you should be saying to you look, you know what, you're brilliant at that stuff, but that stuff isn't, you know, that stuff needs developing or you need to let go of. That's a different conversation. And so if you've got people who are very negative to you and don't recognise your strengths and don't accept your weaknesses, that's not a healthy relationship. Um, And so, again, you know, you've got to be mindful of that. And that might be about moving jobs. It might be changing the team. It might be getting divorced. It might be whatever it needs to be. It might be about not even seeing family members who are, 
you know, narcissistic qualities, you know, that is where you can find yourself is around narcissistic uh, characters in any circumstance. Um, so be mindful of that and don't let that get you down. You know, you can't have people hamper you. So if confidence in any of those things, whether it's yourself or it's other people, I want you to think about this. Um, so I want you to just take a minute and think about what are you really good at? I want you to write down on paper one or two things that you are brilliant at. What are your strengths and what are your achievements? Because you need to stay in your lane. You know, you need to celebrate and focus on jobs. And I've had, as an example of this, I've hired Salesforce consultants before. And in a small consultancy, typically in our consultancy I was running, that person would have to be the BA, the agile project manager, and, um, you know, do the technical work. Like it was a full 360 degree role. Now, I would hire those people and they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do all of that. Great. And then when they start, they love doing the BA and they love the build, but they don't want to write up any documentation. They don't want to say no to the client. They can't have anything. I.e., They don't want to project manage it. And I have an honest conversation with them because I'm like, look, you're great at this stuff, but this stuff, do you want to get trained up on that or you just don't like it? And they're quite often like, you know, I've had people where like, that's not me. I just don't like doing documentation and I really don't like having to prioritize things with the client and having to say no, like I want them, I want to do all their stuff. And I'm like, well, that's great. But in a bigger consultancy, you can just do those things that you're really good at. And maybe this isn't the right role for you because you're great at those things. And you can just go into a role where you're a BA or you're just doing the build and you're not expected to project manage it. Um, it's been the right move for them to move out of my consultancy and move to that role where they can really focus on the strengths and achievements that they really enjoy doing. And they're not having to do all of these things that they've decided, actually, that's not what I want to do. So it's really interesting in the Salesforce ecosystem that there's so many different, you know, you can be a Salesforce consultant, but that can mean lots of different things in different companies, depending on the size of the company, the way they work and everything else. And then there's roles in the end customer. So actually another example is um, I was speaking to one of our consultancy trainees the other day who's gone into a job as an end, uh, she's an end user admin. And she said to me, I get really overwhelmed by having to build out Salesforce around service cloud this was and kind of working on a project and then also being very reactive to the day-to-day -day admin stuff and I don't like multitasking she says you know and having to do all these things I said okay well I said well maybe this isn't maybe being a Salesforce admin with these two responsibilities isn't the right thing for you so we talked through the scenarios for her and one was that um you know she there had been talk internally that she could hire another admin potentially and one of them could take over the day-to-day -day admin tasks and then the other one could focus on the project development and you know new roadmap stuff so that would then split it out rather than being burnout and there's a lot of talk again around this burnout and quite often admins will get burnt out they're trying to do both those things but equally i said to her you know if you just want to have one project where you're focusing on the build and the project and what you're doing then maybe going to work for a consultancy that's quite a bigger consultancy and you can work on one project at a time not a consultancy where you've got five projects is maybe also going to be better for you because you can focus your energy on doing the things that you really love which is building out a crm system having one project you know one client sort of element to it um, and you focus on that. So this confidence element is about sort of being really clear on what you're good at and say, letting go of some of those things you're not so good at or upskilling in other areas if you want to be good at them and then sort of putting them to use around those things. So any questions on confidence? We did have uh, one question. How do you change your inner critic? <laughs> You have to, you, well, you have to talk to yourself nicely every day. So one of the ways to do it is to have a journal and to journal every day and write down the things that you've achieved and what you're great at that day. Because, um, you know, either you say it to yourself verbally, you write it down. Um, you have, again, a coach where you are accountable and you communicate it to them. You've got to start talking to yourself and celebrating the stuff that you're doing every day. 
and um, when you say something to we call them a gremlin on your shoulder in coaching um, if that gremlin comes up and is chattering away you know this is still it happens it's it's normal right you're going to have this inner critic I you know I told mine to shut up this morning I was like you know what bog off I've done well this week I've done xyz <laughs> just like tell it they talk to it as if it's a person and tell it to go jump um and say you know it's okay you know because I was like oh I haven't done any real you know I'm, I'm a bit coaching at the moment to do doing some more reels for social media and I was like look I've got like four events I'm already doing podcasts and webinars this week I don't necessarily need to do reels um so you know just talk to it and tell it to go away but you've got to be clear on what you're doing and celebrating instead and so you just need to start being aware of it and managing it okay all right number five relationships so I've, I've talked about this a little bit as well are you struggling with life and work you know and managing everything so are you feeling right now that there aren't enough hours in the day that you're putting things off that you're doing things that make you unhappy do you need to work, move away from negative relationships which is what i was talking about a minute ago that no longer serve you so the things that i want you to think about here is how you can build your support network can you form a team around you to complement your skills so this was i mean this was a light bulb moment for me when i was running my first business because i was in that beating myself up mode like i can't do all these things i'm not great at everything like how i meant to manage a business and i came across the talent dynamic model which has eight different profiles i think it's eight um different sort of personality profiles now an entrepreneur will naturally be one of those personality types. Um, mine is a mechanic creator star. So um, I'm a creator. I like coming up with the ideas. The star is the PR and doing things like this, raising awareness of what we're doing. And mechanic is processes and making sure we've got, you know, getting things set up. But then around that, you've got um, the Lord, which is like the accountant. You've got supporter you've got the managerial side so um their supporters and something else and then you've got those that love sales um across the bottom like accumulator and so as an entrepreneur you recognize where you are you know and they're your strengths right but what you've got to do is then build a team of people around you with all those complementary skills um that then make a whole business so talent dynamics, we recruit our team based on those profile sets now and make sure that we've got people in the right places. And Zoe, who's like my business partner, technically, she's the opposite to me. So we're perfect. You know, we'll hardly speak during the week. We have a meeting one, an hour a week and then some meetings that overlap. But we just get on with the stuff that we're doing and we're just very complimentary to that. Um, and so I always say to people, well, you know, what is it that you're good at and what is it you want to do? And naturally, obviously, people will move in and out of working, you know, team members because they want to do something else. And maybe that's not what, you know, the team needs. Um, so you've got to find the team. There's lots of different team models. Talent Dynamics is a really great one that I've used. Um, building, uh, you, you know, finding how you can delegate tasks to people. So we have a uh, I think five or six Filipino staff that work with us as um, a range of different jobs actually for our team and we delegate stuff to them and they're great part of the team um, again they've sort of done the talent dynamic model so you know our, everything's sort of delegated within our organization to you know people across the world um, and then also the other way with relationships is to build relationships with mentors and coaches and experts who are going to build your confidence because working with my mentors they build my confidence you know all the time by teaching me new things by giving me that pat on the back um, you know by being a, a supporter of what i'm doing and what is very prevalent um, from everybody that i've ever spoken to about their career progression and where they've achieved is they have sponsors you know people that not necessarily their managers all the time but people who've had their back and they've built a relationship with as a mentor who's put in a good word for them who's supported them who's been their guidance you know who they've gone to for help and advice so you know you can pay for training you can pay for mentoring you could have free mentors or sponsors that build there but they're there sort of supporting you so i'd like you to think about you know how if any of these issue areas resonate with you what is it that you can do 
to build new relationships around you, to delegate, to build your confidence or to complement your skills. They're the sort of different areas that you want to look at. And then finally is impact is do you sit in the shadows or do you step up and make a difference? Now, impact can mean different things to different people. It doesn't have to mean that you're conquering a world issue. Like, you know, for me, it's like, I wonder sometimes where this comes from because my mum and dad were, you know, quite sort of, you know, go to work, do normal jobs. And I'm like, why do I have this mission to support women and get, you know, women returners? You know, I have a world issue that obviously I'm tackling. Um, but for some people, it is simply about making enough money and having time with the family. And that's, if that's your impact, you know at that level that's absolutely fine so it's just been really clear on you know what does the best life look like to you what difference do you want to make in the world and gives you a sense of satisfaction whether that's just making your kids school matches once a week and making them happy or whether it's tackling a world issue like what makes you happy what gives you a sense of impact and pride in what you're doing so the questions to ask yourself is what get clear on what making an impact feels and looks like to you. You know, where do you get happiness from? And this might have that tangible relationship with your goals. Right. And so it's good to reflect on impact and goals. We've kind of gone a bit full circle here. But also what gives you that sense of, you know, how do you know you've achieved that outcome? What does that feel and look like to you? How do you know that you've achieved it? Um, and quite often we can forget to measure the impact and so in the sales source roles that I've had it was fascinating how many of my consultants shied away from doing case studies you know they'd implement the system and they'd be like oh you know and then they'd never go back and say well actually can I see how you've got on six months 12 months down the line like what difference has it made to you they shied away from that they didn't want you know want to know but then when we did manage to get those case studies it made them feel so good because that was their trailblazer story right you know hearing how the organization had been able to achieve xyz as a result of salesforce about how employees were happier um you know hearing these stories was amazing and really you know gave a a, a real sort of pat on the back and was amazing so if you're working on Salesforce projects, make that time to go back to them. Don't be scared. Like maybe you're scared that things haven't worked or, you know, you're scared about them saying, oh, no, it's been rubbish. Well, OK, well, then go and fix it. If you think that, then go and, you know, figure that out and work out, you know, where you need to help them. But don't be shy about going back to those Salesforce customers. You know, if that's an element of impact because we're all here from Salesforce. Obviously, that's going to be one area of impact that you can have is those customers that you're working with. But in other areas of your life as well, you know, don't be scared of asking for feedback or kind of recognizing what outcomes look like for you and feeling like you've done a good job and patting yourself, you know, on the back um, with it. So that's the final element really of those things. So I want you to reflect on all of this um, off the back of tonight and, and see where you do. If any of you want further support with this, you feel like you need that accountability partner and you want to kind of be in this journey, as I say, I, I'm on two mastermind groups, obviously not my own, <laughs> but I, you know, I really advocate for mastermind groups, which is why we wanted to do our own at Super Mums for Salesforce Professionals. Um, as part of this, we give three one to one coaching sessions. We have a peer group coaching session every week for 10 over a course of 12 weeks. There'll be 10 sessions. And then there's now a week to really reflect on all these areas in more detail with coaching exercises as part of it, just to really hone in on what you're doing. And then to talk about this in the group coaching sessions each week to kind of get people move. And this this was a program I spent nine grand on my leadership coaching program to get me out of burnout. I took a loan from the bank. Um, for us, we charge um, $1,200. It's really cheap relatively to what I was paying for mine. Um, and, um, you know, the benefits will be that it will give you that accountability and motivation, that it will equip you with coaching tools and strategies, and it will give you the strength and courage to be true to what you need to be and to be that female leader that, you know, wants to step up. So 
I just hope that you take away whatever you wanted from the session tonight and that has been useful for you. Um, but we are there to help you if you need more help with this right now. So um, just let us know if we can help you. But I hope that's been helpful for everybody tonight. <laughs> That was wonderful. I take so many notes and I'm going to watch the recording too, I think. Um, Luis wants to know, how do you actually go about finding a coach or mentor? Okay. <laughs> it's a big question, well, right? Great question, yeah. So, um, well, at Supermoms, we have one-to-one, -one we have professional coaches and so we do one-to-one -one and coaching. So you can see if they're a right fit. Like it's always chemistry with coaching and so we have free career coaching calls initially for you to try you know try that out amazing coaches quite frankly I think we've got on our team if they weren't right then the you know it's asking on LinkedIn or whatever can you recommend some Salesforce coaches or coaches for what you want because I've one of my coaches and mentors specializes in narcissistic abuse and that was one of the things I've, I've sort of had to weather so um you know I wanted somebody that understood my circumstances so you can find a coach that resonates with whatever you need um but ask for recommendations you know behind the scenes or on social media if it's want to do publicly awesome thank you so much again for spending your evening with us I hope your kids fell asleep <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out soon. I'll put my email in the chat if anybody wants to reach out to me as well. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Heather. This was wonderful. And everyone in the chat says so. Um, and just for everyone on the line, if you're local, remember next month um, we are doing an in-person party, uh, which will be super fun. So just check the event pages for more information. Thanks, everybody.